Hey everybody, in this video we're going to take you on a tour of our 2009 Ford Travel Nimbus. You're not going to want to miss this video, so come on and watch. Hi, I'm Jim. I'm Corinne. And welcome to our channel RV Into Retirement. As I said, we're going to take you on a tour of our Ford Travel Nimbus, and we're going to show you what we like, what we don't like, and we'll start with the exterior, and I'll show you uh, the technology that we like, and Corinne will show you the interior. One of the things you can see that we use on the front are covers on our windshield wipers, also on our windscreen. Uh, this is made by Magna Shade, and uh, they'll custom make them for whatever coach that you have. It has magnetic pockets up there and magnets on the inside of the windshield so that uh, all you have to do is they it comes with a little bit of a pole and you stick them in those pockets and you can put it up one-handed from the ground. You don't need a step stool or a ladder and it really helps keep your heat down. Right now the front of our coach is facing south. We do have a lot of tree cover behind us but we do get some sun in the afternoon and, and just like to protect it. When we're inside, we can see out perfectly. And as you can see from outside, uh, the vision is pretty much blocked. So you do get that privacy and not feel like you're in a fishbowl at the campground. Coming around the side of the coach, the first thing you'll notice is on our front tire and actually on all our tires we use these wheel covers and what they do is they prevent the side walls from cracking from the ultraviolet rays also down here you can see we do have a leaf blower that we use to blow off our patio as well as a broom and then we have a shoe brush down there uh, as well as a mat to wipe our feet on before we enter the coach the first bay here is a pull-out tray. I'm not gonna open it up. It's not much different than any other pull-out tray that you've seen in RVs. And the second one is a pass-through bay. What this bay has that's kind of unique is a pull-out television. And so instead of having your television mounted up on the slide where you're tilting your head up to look at it, it's basically at patio level so that you're looking straight at your TV with no neck strain. Coming over to the next bay is our battery bay. And we have four AGM 4D 210 amp hour batteries. You can see on the floor, there's some ventilation holes for the batteries. On the top, I have a little bit of storage. And then up in the corner there, that blue box that you see is our solar controller to charge the batteries up. We do have five solar panels mounted on the roof of the RV. This is our right side fuel fill. There's one on the left side. Uh, we use primarily the left side because we stop at truck stops 99% of the time. The next bay over is our water manifold. And what the water manifold does is it allows us to isolate any leaks that there may be by turning the switch and uh, shutting off water to one of those specific locations. To the left of that on the bottom here is our water pump and uh, it's nicely labeled. It has some drains. And one thing you'll notice as I take you through the compartments is Fort Travel lays them out very neatly and everything is marked. On the upper side, I have a fire extinguisher and then this little device here is a temperature monitor that's set to an alarm on the inside that'll let me know if temperatures get to freezing level in this compartment. And we have a heater over here. This is controlled by our Oasis heating, which will heat this bay because our fresh water tank is down here on the bottom. Moving around 
to the back section. You can see both of these wheels also have the Magna Shade wheel covers. Uh, the primary reason for having the hole in the middle is not only aesthetics, but that if you have a cover that covers your entire wheel, you stand the possibility of rodents ma making a nest in there. They like it, it's protected, it's covered, it's off of the ground from the elements. So this just is another ounce of uh, prevention. Moving along towards the back, one of the primary reasons that we bought this diesel pusher and previously a country coach was because they had a side radiator. And there's a little bit of controversy on whether a side radiator is better or cooler. We tend to believe that it's cooler. It's bringing in clean air behind the coach. You have air churning around and uh, we just like it for that reason. I have easy access to go out and blow out these fins with either air or water and make sure that they stay clean. But even a bigger reason as we move around to the engine compartment is because there's direct access to your engine compartment here. If you had a rear radiator, this entire space over here would be blocked by the radiator. And if you needed any mechanical work done on this, they would have to go inside your coach and there's an access hatch in the bedroom that would allow a mechanic to uh, get access to this. It's a lot more labor. Uh, this is a lot easier uh, than having a uh, rear radiator, just having this open access. This panel on the bottom uh, unscrews by these two bolts and gives you even more access if you needed it. Moving around to the driver's side, we have another compartment over here that I won't open, but it has our engine batteries in there and it's also additional ventilation for the engine compartment and so uh, we find that this coach runs very cool because of the ventilation that it has we're usually running around 190 degrees even on uh, mountain climbs this bay here is for our electric cooker it's on an electric reel, as is our water. We do have a drain and a flush out system for our black tank. Our black and gray tank are combined. And so uh, typically we only use the black and uh, you can do this one as the gray, what it's labeled as a bypass. So that if you're doing laundry or taking showers, you can open that up and it'll bypass uh, the tank completely and just go straight into the sewer. And then again, over here is our other fuel fill. In this compartment is our electronics bay and uh, just some miscellaneous things for our slides. So starting right here is our outback inverter. And then to the left of that is our central vacuum. And then our Oasis hydronic heating. Way in the back there are some controls for our slides, as well as some fuse boxes and panels over here. Everything is neatly laid out, easy access, uh, somewhat easy access uh, to um, the compartments. Up on the top here, you can see that there's a fan and I have a thermostat over here and I can control the temperature inside the bays also. Up in the front are two more storage bays. 
the other the other side of the ones that I showed you on the the uh, passenger side. And then lastly up front is a bay that I store all the coach documents are in that case. Uh, there's the water fill for your windshield washer and just some emergency tools. We have a switch over here which will operate our generator. If you need to get access to the generator compartment, it's on a slide and it'll come out and you could do whatever maintenance that you need to do on it. One last thing that I wanted to point out that For Travel does is if you take a look at their slides, they have these rounded corners and there's no bars or beams coming out underneath. It's a very clean, uh, flush look. They have a air bladder that goes around the whole slide. And so when you're putting the slide in or out, you release the air from the air bladder, you move the slide, and then you turn a, a knob or a key, and it will fill the air bladder up again, making a very tight seal. You only see, I've only seen this type of slide on Newell's, Four Travels, and Prevost. There might be some others out there, but uh, I'm not familiar with that. At this point, let's go inside and take a look at the interior. As we enter the coach, I'll show you a little bit of how we have it set up. So there are dogs wanting to come out and uh, play, but we set up their uh, leashes and stuff right over here. So we have some potty bags for them. So they're all ready when they wanna go in and out. Our steps have some type of vinyl that came from the factory and so this keeps this area pretty clean they wipe off easily now this front over here where sierra is standing this used to all be tiled and what we did is we put this indoor outdoor carpet that we got at lowe's which is really good if for catching you can see some grass right here and so our shoes don't go beyond this point right over here. We store them underneath the driver's area. Usually when we come into the coach, we have this set up with uh, the driver's seat turned around and you can see Corinne's portable desk over there and that can slide around and uh, move it anywhere we want, but that's her workstation during the day. Taking a look at the way our dash is set up, we do have uh, a glass dash by Silverleaf. And so what I really like about this is that it will show me all of the different systems that are going on with the coach. I can change it to different formats and just get a lot of data on what's going on with the coach. There's a diagnostic screen if I have any check engine lights or any fault codes. I can see what, the, what it is right away. There's um, a way that I can monitor our trips and what's going on. And usually the way I drive is in this format right here where I have uh, water temperature and transmission temperature right on the top and then speed and tachometer I monitor. I try to keep my RPMs up as I'm going up grades. And then what this will do is uh, you can set this up to calculate your trip and it'll show you uh, how many miles per gallon you're getting, what your arrival time is. And probably the most important thing is how much fuel is required for the trip. There is a setting that I can push and see how much fuel I have on board. Right now I have 120 gallons, we hold 150. So on uh, this particular trip that we were looking at, it said it needed, uh, I think 17 gallons to do the trip. Up in this corner, 
we used to have the tire pressure system built into the Silver Leaf, but uh, it's old. It's a 2009 coach, and that no longer works. So we have this set up right here, and it'll show us the pressure on our uh, each one of our uh, tires, including our tow vehicle. And it has alarm set if there is too high of a pressure, too low of a pressure, and lets us know right away. One of the things that's sort of unique to four travels is instead of having an engine retarder, they, uh, excuse me, instead of having an engine brake, they have what's called a retarder right there. And what that that is, is a, a, almost like a stick shift to control your braking when going down hills. So we can set this from one to six and be assured that it's going to slow us down going down the hills. Now what it uses, unlike the engine uh, retarder which uses the engine valves and such, this uses the transmission. So the transmission temperature will get high. That's why I like to monitor that over there. One of the big reasons that we wanted a Class A was just this huge view that you get outside your front window and when you're traveling the roads and the highways of the United States it really gives you a panoramic view of everything that you're wanting to see versus in towing a fifth wheel or sitting in uh a Class C that you're more or less sitting like in a pickup truck so you don't get the same visibility. To the left of the driver's seat are all the controls. There's the uh, generator control. It can be set on manual or auto. And then uh, our slide rooms are controlled by these two boxes right here. And then we have all our lighting. We have three air conditioners on the unit. The wood in the coach is African mahogany and the upper cabinets in the front we use mostly for things that we're not using that frequently with the exception of this cabinet over here which has our keys and our awning controls on the passenger seat there is another monitor that will sync with the gps so that uh, the passenger can also help with navigation and guidance. A couple of things I forgot to mention. So up in the very front, we have two cameras. Uh, one, the one that's flashing, the black one is a Garmin. And what it does is it gives you lane detection of movement and also will record any accidents that may happen. And so uh, we also use this to record some of our photography and it's voice activated, you can talk to it. The one to the left of that is a remote security camera that we can monitor the coach at any time it's made by Blink. Over here, you can see the inside of the magna shade and you can see the magnets that are attached to the windshield. And what those do is just help that the uh, sunscreen stays on there. Up in this upper left-hand corner is where we have our cellular modem attached. And we use a PepWave cellular modem. And I'll put a link up above in the left-hand corner on just what that does for us. And to wrap up our technology uh, on the RV, uh, Right over here, we have our stereo cabinet. And inside there, there's an amplifier. We have satellite dishes and our Apple TV that we use. And uh, that can be controlled remotely by this remote over here. And we have one inside in uh, the bedroom also. And then we use this area up on top just to store some of our stuff as we're going in and out. Last but certainly not least is our LaCrosse temperature monitor. This is connected to our Wi-Fi, so it'll give us any weather alerts. It also will measure the temperature inside the RV and send us an alert if it's getting too hot or too cold so that we know to get back to the RV to take care of our pets. 
So now I'm going to turn it over to Corinne for an interior tour, and she'll tell you what we like about this coach and what we don't like. But overall, I think we love it. 